What's up YouTube? We're coming at you with a special edition. This is my friend Seth. I met him off of ZR2 Zone. Uh, it's a, a tap talk thing that we got on uh, the phones and everything. There's tons and tons of information out there and coming to find out you can meet some cool people too. Found out real soon after talking to him that he lives in Austin which is not too far away from where we live in Temple and he's got a bison as well. So Seth tell us a little bit about your truck real quickly kind of go over some of the stuff that you've done and then we're going to go in deep, bigger detail on everything that you've done all right um i've had this truck i ordered it in october of 2018 the day ordering opened up for the bison i had a zr2 gas extended cab before that um pick this up it came in on january 11th and I have about 20,000 miles on it and a lot of the stuff carried over from my previous CR2 and then I've added a lot more stuff as you can see. Absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna kind of do a walk around and we'll point out some of the stuff on there and talk about more of the stuff that he's done to it. I think you're gonna like this. So a quick recap of everything that he talked about is the he ordered the bumper from AV. It comes in gunmetal gray. He had it paint matched with Linex uh, the way that it normally comes. He's got the Baja Designs light bar. He's got a camera system that's a wireless camera system. He's upgraded the headlights and turn signals to the diode dynamics. Uh, LEDs. I believe he did the fog lights as well. Uh, and then he did a Gen 5 DIY uh, wiring harness, which uh, allows him to change the running light from the headlight to the turn signals. Uh, there's a bunch of information right here, and I'm really bummed that the, the camera, the, the wind just really kind of messed everything up. But hopefully, you know, you can see from the, the video, you can kind of get an idea of what all he's done up front and have the appreciation for what he did there. Okay, we're having a good time here. So tell us what we got going on on this side right here. Well, the first thing you obviously notice is the air intake. It's the AEV high air intake. Most people call it a snorkel. Um, however, it is not watertight. Gotcha. Down here, the nice thing about the AEV snorkel is it hooks in inside the fender to the stock air intake. Gotcha. So you are replacing things up to the box, but it's the same position. Okay. So rather than the air coming in from the wheel well, it's now coming from up here. One thing you do have to realize, especially it being so dusty here in Texas, your air filter is going to get a lot dirtier if you're going down dusty roads. Especially I, if you're not the first truck. <laughs> Yes. Um, so I have purchased AEV has a cyclone top for okay. it. That's supposed to keep it a little bit cleaner. Is that like a sock or something that goes over it? No, it it's actually, inside? it's a whole different piece. Okay. Um, that is circular and it has fins that rotate. So it's okay. supposed to keep more of that dust out. Okay. I'm trying to see how fast the air filter gets dirty using this one before I switch it off. Gotcha. Makes sense. Um, how was the install? Was it pretty difficult? Is it something that your average person could do? Or is it something that you'd want to take to somebody else that has a little more experience in it? I personally, I didn't trust myself of cutting in um, just the same way I, when I was growing up, I worked at a diabetes camp. I can give somebody else an injection, but there <laughs> but is no yourself. way I can do it to myself. <laughs> that's fair. So a good friend recommended um, one of his friends that's worked on his truck and I was right there alongside of him. Okay. I do have pictures posted up on ZRT zone okay. of that. One of the things that we discovered is we took off the fender to give us a little easier access on the early production ones. Okay. They self drilled the top holes for the fender and mine weren't painted. Gotcha. So if you have an early production one, you might want to check that out. Okay. just to stop some rust down down the line and you made um, uh, uh, an inquiry or something along the lines I did I'm actually a GM employee okay. and we have an internal line that we can call or email and say things that we're concerned about okay so as soon as I found that out I did I let them know that mine weren't I fixed mine just with some spray paint and a can and a q-tip um, but 
they should be concerned about rust warranty issues. Okay. Um, and my understanding, a few folks that have much later productions, they've These taken them fixed. off and they've been painted. So GM did good on that. Um, that was it. It was. That's, that's good information on that, guys. So if you have an early uh, edition that has these uh, uh, fenders on here uh, that, this coming, that came out early 2019, like you just said, that those holes are not painted the way that they're supposed to, but it has been corrected since then. So that's great information uh, if, if you're watching the video and, and you have an early version of it. So let's talk about these tires. Um, it's definitely a lot larger than what comes stock on there, and it's a different rim and everything. Tell us a little bit about how you got, uh, is it plus two or plus three? It is a plus two. Okay. Um, the stock tires that come are about a 31, and these are about a 33. Okay. So the first thing I did was order the AEV Crestone wheels. Um, one of the reasons that I went with that, one, I love the looks. They had right. it at the SEMA concept on their concept when they showed it. I went with the silver protection rings, but what's nice about this is why they call it dual sport. It, these are beadlock capable. If you have the beadlock ring, you can also run them without the protection ring. Um, so that's why I went ahead and did it. I did not do beadlock because there was no tire dealer in Austin that would mount beadlocks <laughs> and I did not want to be stuck doing it myself. And again, it was one of those things, it was more of a want than a need. Absolutely. I don't go off-road every day, and so this serves my purpose really well. Um, again, went with the silver and following the theme of the front bar. Right. And you'll see in the back on my bed rack is why I went with silver, and it gives me a different look, and I haven't seen um, other folks running a silver protection ring. The tires, I went with the BF Goodrich KO2s. Okay. Um, I've used these tires previously, not on anything like a truck. I had them on my Honda Element. Okay. But I saw how much that increased my performance on a Honda Element off-road. How does it do on all the different terrains? So dry, wet, uh, hardball, dirt road? It, it's been great. I've taken this truck up to Montana. I've been stuck in the mud road with noise. them. Road noise, I would say, is a is definitely a little bit increased, but not anything where you can't have a conversation. I'm not turning the radio up um, <laughs> to cover it. Um, they've been great tires. Um, I've done a little damage to it, um, doing wheel spin on max tracks. We'll show that here in a minute. <laughs> um, but other than that, they are, I think, in my opinion, the best all-purpose tire. Okay. They're great off-road. They're great on road. Um, the only difference is they are heavier, okay. so braking's a little bit slower. Gotcha. Um, and you do have that added unsprung weight. Okay. How how is it for clearance? So you had to do what kind of lift? Was it just a leveling kit or a lift kit? So I did my research, and you'll find on anything that I've put on the truck, I've gone and researched well before. Okay. Everybody that's gone up to a 285-7017, so a 33-inch tire, has done a level kit. Okay. So before we put the rims and tires on, we did a Fab um, 589 Fab um, level kit. And, and is this just a spacer at the top of the spring and everything? It's a spacer on top of the spring and I did get the larger bump stop okay. to compensate for that. I have not trimmed yet. There is a little rubbing. I'm right here on the right, side. You can see okay. some of that right there. It's very minor and it's only under compression okay. and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. So as long as you're on level surface, if you go extreme left, extreme right, you don't have any mm -hmm. rubbing. It's only whenever you're kind of get all your weight on one side Correct. or whatever. Okay. Cool deal. I like it. Let's reposition and talk about some more of the goodies you got all here. Right. <laughs> okay, so tell us what we got going on right here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll start at the top. Um, that is the Rhino Rack Backbone System. Okay. I saw an early prototype about a year ago on an extended cab. CBI, Prinzu, everybody makes them, but not for the extended cab. Okay. So the day I kept checking Rhino's website, the day it came out on Rhino's website, I called my vendor down in Austin, Rack Outfitters, and had them order me one. This is the lowest that you can get prior to what I had on here was Chevy Accessories Tooley Rack that was removable. They were just two crossbars. 
but they came up about to where this handle it's about is. about three inches taller. Yeah. And that's something that we were talking about earlier. So this rack actually sits below your, your bed rack system and everything. It does. Which is pretty cool. Um, it's worked out really well. Um, it can hold 200 pounds distributed on it. Okay. So it increased the capacity over the Thule load bars that I had there. And because it's a flat space, pretty hard to get in because I know that you're supposed to do something you push them up in there use the window or whatever to push them up any any noise you know, issues getting them in not at all um they bend a little being plastic you okay. don't want to bend them too much because you will crack them <laughs> um, but these were actually on my prior zero two so okay. these were a carryover piece so nice. I had them in and out and back again I think I shipped on the inside that goes into the channel one bit. Okay. Everything else that I've seen, including from Chevy accessories, were tape-on ones. Yeah, and I'm not and a big fan of those either. Not at all. Those they're very low profile and sleek. I, I like them. I really do. Yep. I noticed your uh, handles are different too. Yep. Those are the work truck handles. Okay. I went with black, and that was one to tie in with the snorkel being black. And also what you see here are the GM Accessories camera system, which unfortunately I found out does not work on a 2019 infotainment system. Mm. They come with chrome mirror caps with the cam cameras built in. Okay. I took it to my Linex guy, had them Linex in black, tried to install them myself, couldn't figure it out, took it to the dealer. Then we found out it does not work. Oh man. Again, being a GM employee, I was able to contact the accessories department telling them get it off the site, saying that it's compatible. So what years will the, the camera system work on? Anything below I, 19? I believe it's 2016 to 2018. It might be the 2015s, but okay. check on the accessories website and it will tell you. Okay. Um, I got lucky. GM refunded most of my money back. Obviously not for Line X and then right. they allowed me to keep it. I know that Echo Master, who makes it, they're trying to make it compatible, but it's been over six months and we haven't heard anything. So hopefully in the future there'll be a software update or whatever that'll allow it to work. Yeah, what I believe is is the 2015 doesn't have the connector for the camera system in the back of it. Uh, so I am all wired, ready for it to go. Um, if they ever fun. bring it out, um, as you as I mentioned before. That's one of the reasons why I went with the Garmin Overlander. You can right. hook up four wireless cameras. You saw one in the front. Okay. Um, and you've changed out the badge too. You I did. Like <laughs> Some, somewhat <laughs> like you, but again, since I was doing the all black. Yeah. Um, actually, I brought these for my prior ZR2. These are the Redline badges. So the, there's a Colorado Redline right. that has these badges. So they're black on the front, red on the inside. And you'll see as we go down along, the red goes Plays in with my Max tracks. We almost did those, but we didn't have anything that was red on the truck, so that's why we opted to go with all black. And in fact, I, I don't know if you saw my truck at the house or not, but I took all the badges off of it. I don't like them at all. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first truck that we've kept them on. Okay, so let's uh, move down and talk about some more of the goodies. Sounds some good. good stuff on here. Okay, so now we're at the back where all the meat and potatoes are. Show us what you got going on here. There's actually a lot going on. The first thing you'll notice is I have the Littner Active Cargo System. Okay. I went round and round searching for bed racks. And one of my main points with this truck is I didn't want to lose the ability of it being a truck. Absolutely. I wanted to be able to get stuff into the bed. That back bar, you can see the turn knobs. All you do is do the turn right knobs here. and you can slide that forward. Okay front one's not adjustable just the back one it is adjustable but with bolts with bolts okay, okay so, so not, not easily quick. adjustable um ended up with the Littner it's all aluminum 70 pounds 
It has um, 1,000 pounds static weight capacity, 500 on-road, and 250 off-road. Okay. So I can still run my rooftop tent off-road, and it can hold all of that. Okay. So is it 70 pounds just the rack, or is it 70 pounds with the boxes? Nothing in the boxes. No, just 70 pounds with the rack. The good or bad thing about the Lickner is they have a ton of accessories for it. Okay. You can see right here, this is actually for a flagpole mount. Okay. And it's very stable, so I can run with the flagpole going. Nice. This is one of their accessory gear boxes. You just, you can, they're lockable, lift it up. It has an arm to hold it up. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so I can carry stuff in here. It is dust and waterproof pretty okay. much. I wouldn't count on it being forever. What kind of weight capacity ballparkish can you put in there? Is it 50, 60 pounds or? Um, I've had all my recovery gear, um, so I know much. I've had too much. <laughs> I don't know what the weight limit on is, if there is. Okay. Um, it's been a beast. Um, and as I said, I've had recovery gear in there, so there had to have been 100 pounds in there. Okay. And it's pretty good size too. It looks like it's about, what, 14, 15 inches deep and probably 18 to 20 tall. It ballpark. is. I mean, it. It's deeper on the bottom than it is on the top because okay. it works in perfectly with the rack dimensions. Um, you know, but as I said, they have accessories, so they have max track bars that you can do the max track pins to. Um, the red max tracks I had from my prior ZR2, because as you see when we get to the other side, red gas cans for the gas. <laughs> Um, so that's how that came in, and that's why I did the red line badges. Okay. But what's great is you can fit four Max Tracks on here. They're lockable. Okay. In the back, when I first got my original ZR2, I did go with knockoffs, but they were so thick that I could only carry two in the same space that I could carry four. Gotcha. So I went with the Max Tracks after that. You see a little bit of uh, uh, bent pegs and stuff here, and we were talking about some uh, tire slippage and, and everything earlier. Yeah, <laughs> so one of the things, and it says right on there, is no wheel spin. <laughs> For good reason. However, when I went up to Montana, I was on reduced engine power, got stuck in mud that probably went right up to the rock rails. <laughs> I was carrying my X-Venture trailer, and you could not, I mean, I was, I couldn't see even where the tires were oh, and man. putting them in the mud. And I got stuck a good three to five times um, going out there. <laughs> and I was about three hours away from the closest city. Oh. So there was nobody there to pull me out if I needed to be. So this was, I'm getting out no matter what way. And learn my lesson. Not only are you wearing down or melting down, it dug in to my tread and ripped it apart. Right on. Um, well, but you know right what? On. I got out. You got out. That's it. Um, and the and so the generic ones, they're I've seen some different reviews on them, and they're okay in a pinch. Um, but you would definitely recommend doing the Max Track for a couple the, of reasons. They're stronger and they're thinner, so you can get more on there. Exactly. Okay. They are more expensive, but up in Montana, they paid for themselves. Fair enough. Um, so I know we're going to talk a little bit about your, your bed toolbox and everything. It added some weight. Uh, about what would you think you've got in the in the back? Or all um, I do have the deck system. Um, the fuel containers on the other side are not full. I don't run them around on my daily driver with them full, only when I'm going out. Um, I would say I have easily four to 600 extra pounds in the back because the deck drawers are always full okay. of my crap. <laughs> All your recovery stuff and yep. everything. So one of the things that we did do, and this is how I met Eric, was um, he offered help. I did Peak Suspensions Adelief, okay. which was a sp supposedly gives me 750 more pounds capacity. Okay. And I was definitely drooping in the back with all the weight that I had. So before you put the Adelief spring in, how did it handle? Was it kind of sloshy and everything, or did it feel pretty good? Well, I tried something else. I bought used Timberins SES rear suspension. Okay. Um, they're basically like rubber. The bump stops, the oversized bump stops? They're not bump stops. They sit on top of your springs. Gotcha. Um, and I had so much weight, they were automatically touching oh, the frame. Um, 
it's a world of difference between the two. All right, so now you got something you're handling back. It feels like the truck it, again. It feels like the stock truck again. Right on. Um, I would say it probably gave me another inch in the back. Okay, yeah, that's um, something that we were looking at. It looks, I think we measured, it wasn't real accurate with a uh, uh, tape measure or anything, but it's pretty close to stock height now when yeah. before it was sagging an inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, I would say. The only other thing that we have back here, are, these are the Lucerne mud flaps. Okay. I have them for the front too, um, but until I trim, I know there's no way I can put you them back them there. <laughs> The only thing you can see, there's three screws holding it on. There's actually a fourth screw, but because of the bison flare, the bison's flare is not cut to reach that screw. On gotcha. the other side, I drilled. This side I decided not, and we'll show you on the other side what happened by me drilling through okay. that. Um, I just, as a truck owner, I hate when I'm behind somebody and all that Getting spray all is off. coming back. So I always try. I definitely want them in the front because I'm sure as you know, it gets all the all door handles <laughs> are the worst and there's nothing worth it putting your hand on the door handle uh -huh. <laughs> trying to get into your truck. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what's been done back here. Okay, uh, real quick, I think, I think the camera shows it. If not, I'll just kind of throw it in. Uh, some of the steel pictures and some of the other stuff that we got. But you've got a different exhaust tip on here, and that was the... Uh, it's the AFE DPF back okay. exhaust, and as you know on yours, that thing will be pancaked in no time. It, it hangs down very, very far. Um, and so we'll get a shot underneath, but it goes from the DPF back, okay. um, and it's called the high tuck and it really does. It gets it up out of the way. It looks cool. How does it sound? Does it sound any different? There's no difference in sound. As I said, it's DPF back, so it's past any of the resonators or bumpers or whatever they have. There. So it keeps you all legal, but gives you the clearance that you need if you're gonna be going off road. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and reposition and we'll try and get some shots of that and talk about some more good stuff. So as I mentioned before, one of the reasons why I went with the Littner rack is it allowed me to still completely use the the bed of the truck without impeding. Their design has four hand turns for the back bar. You unscrew, you loosen those and you can slide the bar all the way to the front. So you can get tall items in the back. The other thing that I discovered is you can easily take it off. So you can put your tall items in, put the bar back and have a bookcase or what nice and tight. So that's really one of the things I love about the Littner. It looks really cool too. Um, another thing, this is a good angle to kind of be pointing out while you're up there. I think the camera's picking up, but you can see that back box over there. We we're talking about the front side over here. You can see how far back it hangs in the bed. Uh, it, it hangs in a good ways, but it's not too much to take up too much. It's space. not. There's also enough room to get a 45 quart Yeti in between them. Nice. Um, I've learned that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's uh, move down here in just a second and we'll talk about your, your deck uh, toolboxes. Okay, so now we're back here and you've got the decked uh, toolboxes and everything. And then what's this fancy little contraption that you got on top here? This is the bottom piece to my Alucab fridge slide. So I have an ARB Elements fridge, the one that you can leave outside in the rain and whatnot. Um, again, I wanted to be able to use the bed of my truck and what was great about this deck system was this drawer is actually wide enough of how I installed it was crawling into the drawer. So this is actually attached with wing nuts on the bottom so I can easily take it out wow. if I need to get something um, in there. Okay. And in here, you've got all your recovery tools. Uh, I have, re stuff in there too. I really do. And I probably <laughs> carry way too much weight um, in here. It hung up on something. Yeah, it did. The toolbox, there we go. Um, and this is full length of the bed too. This is full length, so it goes well beyond here. I have a portable double compressor ARB with an air tank okay. that's up in front. This bag contains the majority of my recovery gear. Let me grab this camera real quick and I, I want you guys to see kind of how he's got things inside the, the toolbox area. So as mentioned, um, in this bag, I have my recovery gear. This is actually a decked 
toolbox that's actually made for this thinner drawer on the midsize, but it fits crosswise in the larger drawer. Um, I've got a bottle jack and jack stands in here, first aid kit, um, Indy flat, um, deflator and inflator. So you can do two tires at once. Um, there's more jack stands back here. This one's actually much cleaner and more organized than my other drawer, but we'll, we'll open up in the, into that okay. as well. It's a blessing and a curse is one, I'm carrying all this weight around, but I have everything I need and I never have to worry about it. If Absolutely. somebody says, oh, if I only had, I probably have it back here. <laughs> And, and for those who are, are uh, like gun enthusiasts and everything, I've even read that they actually have gun racks that you can put in here. So if you go out hunting or whatever, you can throw your weapon in there. Yeah, I mean, it's been great. The payload capacity of the top Catch this. I think it's about to fall again. <laughs> is, is 2,000 pounds. So it's more than the payload of our truck. So I knew it could handle anything I'm going to throw back there. And I don't know what the weight capacity of the drawers are, but it's been holding a lot. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, and they easily slide back. They do offer locks for it, but all I do is I keep my tailgate locked. Gotcha. Um, and there's only about four inches, so it's not even enough for a drawer to be opened. So it's nice and secure. And uh, they're weatherproof too, aren't they? They are weatherproof. You can see here, this one's laying down. I've got to call deck and see what's going on with that. But there's weather strips. It's not by any means completely um, airtight. You will get some dust in there, but I've never had water build up in there except for the ammo cans, which they say would happen anyway. And you're supposed to drill a hole or something in those, or is there a drain plug in the bottom of them? There is not a drain plug in the bottom of them. You can, um, there is a spot to drill for that. Okay. I just haven't done it. There's also a drain plug for the drawers if you so want. I've seen crazy things of people using them as coolers um, and drain it out. But if you're a fisherman and you oh, yeah. throw your fish back there or you need to clean them out, you don't have to take the whole drawer out. Right on. Um, as I said, this one is nowhere near as organized. Let's take a look inside of this one. He's got a lot of extra stuff in there. <laughs> I do. I mean, I carry a hammer. I have a mallet. Um, I have one of those ARB hydraulic jacks in there. Here's my um, tire repair kit. I keep rolled up wrenches and other tools back here. I've got extra wire. I've got drill bids. I've got a s small two by four in case I need that. But as I said, I have everything duct tape. Um, extra bolts for the Littner rack in case I buy something and need to attach something. <laughs> um, it's, as I said, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, but it's nice knowing that I have everything there and I don't have to remember, did I bring it? It's already all there and it's there whenever I need it. And especially having the tools back here, you never know when you're gonna need it or be able to help somebody out. Absolutely. So it's been great in that aspect. Okay, so on the very back here, we can see that you've got a couple extra things. Uh, what else is here going on here that I don't know about? Forgot. Well, one of the things that you probably don't notice is a huge exhaust pipe hanging out. That's right. So the exhaust with this high APF high tuck comes out right here. Okay. So it's not going out on the side of your vehicle. It is above the tow hitch, so the tow tow hitch is the lowest point um, when AEV released their brackets for the rear I just simply punched out the covers that they had there I have stuck with Baja design lights all around the truck um, they offer the most options where you can change out the optic lens yourself on them okay um, and these are simply um, the work scene um, lenses on here one of the tips I can give you is I tried everywhere with those brackets to get them flush, wasn't able to do it. So these actually have Baja Designs clear covers okay. that brought them flush. And so even if they end up rubbing the back of the steel, it's the cover that's gonna get damaged, not gotcha. the lens itself. And that, that's something that I found out. So 
we bought the brackets too and I installed the brackets and I started recording a video on it and then whenever I went to put my cheap Amazon uh, pods in there I found out that they were not going to line up at all so AEV's kind of designed uh, the bumper and the bracket and everything to fit with just a few different uh, manufacturers of lights and I know Rigid's one uh, the Baja, Baja design is one and I think there's one other one I'm not sure probably Vision X is usually what I, I see them um, saying they work they'll work with others you're gonna have to play with it yep. and with the Baja designs I had to play with it I did the brackets upside down I tried every which way you can imagine the other thing that you're not going to notice is I removed the factory spare from okay. underneath and I really did this when I went up to Montana because I know I, I was that was an off-road trip right um and it hangs down way too low how much extra clearance would you say that it gives you because I know ours hangs down probably just below the hitch yeah I would say all together six inches okay. um I do have a cheap Harbor Freight trailer tire there just because I learned on my prior ZR2 that that hoist right if you roll up that hoist without weight you're gonna ruin your hoist okay um and there that's pretty much one of the things I want to mention. The reason why my spare tire was up on the Rhino rack is wow. I did buy a hitch gate. It will not work because of these recovery points back here. And you can't remove these, can you? They're removable as long as you remove the whole bumper and unattach it from the frame. And it wasn't pretty and I wasn't willing to do that. Okay. Um, I've asked Relentless Fabrication just recently bought a bison and they asked folks what they wanted and i said i want a swing out tire option for the rear bison bumper okay hopefully they'll come out with something but until now unless i make something that folds down and folds back up there's no option currently out on the market that will work for that okay one other thing while we're back here and uh, i guess some video with the gopro but on your shocks uh, you've got some uh uh, skid plates and stuff down there. I do. I have the Dayton fabrication skids. Um, at the time, they were the only ones that were no drill. Okay. Um, on my prior ZR2, I had the 589 Fab skid um, shock skids um, out from there. And I just, because I had to drill for them, I wasn't about to remove them and move them on over to here. Okay. Like I said, we'll, we'll get some video of that and then plug that in. I think that's everything. So we got lights, tailgate, all that good stuff. Yeah, the only thing, I eventually will change out the badges back here. I just haven't thought. I do have another Redline badge. Um, I will probably go ahead and order a new AEV badge and Plasti dip it. But again, I've got the red and the black, so I have to figure out how I'm going to do that. So this is basically the other side of the Littner rack. Okay. Um, not basically, it is. <laughs> um, I have another gear pod back here for more stuff. You can see I have my camp chair there. I have some amphibious shoes that I always carry around. That's very little weight in here. Folks always ask me, why do I have a gasoline rotopack? <laughs> Again, my prior ZR2 was a gas. Okay. Um, but also for the trailer, I have a portable generator. And there's always somebody that runs out of gas. So this helps a lot that I have an empty one. As I said, daily, I run these empty. One of the negatives about the rotopacks is these aren't self-venting. So in the heat in Austin, this will expand and it will contract when it gets cold. Okay. Actually, what I do is I just run this loose so that it can self-vent because even without gas in there, it still has vapor and it still does it. Does it have a, a fill line or something on here that uh, if you're going to have it full, you should not fill it above or anything? It does like that? and it's marked on it. I know there is on the diesel. I'm sure there is. Um, on the gas as well also on the water ones they have freeze lines so okay. you only fill it up there in case okay. it freezes what well, again Littner makes universal racks that you can tie the rotopacks i also have more for the other side okay. so i can carry more rotopacks if i so need but these end up being easy as you can see i have the locks for them i took the lock off this one 
this I have two um, water tanks on here. And that's and what I was just about to ask. So you can see the dis difference in between the two. This is thicker, this is thinner. Can you double stack this? I can if you okay. buy, of course, more attachments, right? <laughs> um, everything's more money. But basically, you, lo you loosen those. And if you line up. Go through. We're just using them for audio. <laughs> <laughs> they come off really easy. These okay. are the new designed ones. The old ones have where they're interlocking. So if you put them on the side, on the inside, in order to get the rotopacks, I mount them like this. Okay. Um, but this has been a great system and to always have it um, up on the truck. One, I don't have any place to store it in my garage for all this. So that's why it stays up there. These were from my prior ZR2, so they carried over. The only thing I had to do was buy two diesel. Okay. The problem, this is a three gallon gas. The biggest diesel they make is like 2.25 or something is like that. Is that 2.25 gallons? Per? Yes, okay. per. So, so that's why I have two of them, but okay. of course the diesel is going to take me farther than the Absolutely. gas would have. Um, What's the storage on the water? Two? I think these are 2.25 is what they made the new ones, the prior okay. ones. It says two gallons on it, yeah. Okay. Um, the only difference between the new roto packs is they no longer have the interlocking. Okay. Um, the feet where when these were horizontal, I could lock them together and just have one lock ah. on both of them. Gotcha. Um, which helped a lot. But these sit firmer on the ground than these. These always tipped over. Gotcha. Um, that's it. Um, okay. basically on this side, the other, we'll probably have to move the camera. Okay. The other, the keypad. Okay. One more quick thing. You were wanting to show us something about, uh, the, uh, screw or bolt hole on your mud flap over here. So on the mud flap, you can see that I have four screws. This screw down here, the bison flare does not have a hole to access that screw. Okay. So I actually drilled through on this side. And what you see is now this does not line up perfectly. Ah, okay. Is what I discovered. And mud does get caked up back up in there, but I wasn't going through to unscrew because you do have to take the tire <laughs> off to get that. So I learned my lesson, did one less screw. As I said, I was in mud up to here in Montana. It stayed on. I haven't okay. had it fall off. So that seemed to work. Okay, cool deal. No. Let's check out this other thing here. So this is an ideal I stole from somebody else um, out, on guys. Colorado fans. This is the keyless plate and I actually Velcroed it back here. <laughs> so when I go to the airport and I don't want someone that has more time to be looking around, I right. can take it off with me. But this has been great. When I go to the gym, I can leave my keys in the truck. I've got a five digit code or six digit code that I can type in. I can lock the truck from here without my keys okay. and putting it back here has been great because nobody knows you have it. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't know it was there. And I think I remember we talked about it briefly uh, one day, but I, I didn't, and I forgot about it again. Uh, how is that set up and how hard is it to do and how expensive so, is it? Is that something that I'm interested in doing? I think the piece itself is about $125 from okay. GM Accessories. You then have to take it to your dealer and they have to program it, but really GM has to program it. So they have to give GM your serial number. Uh, they okay. send it up to GM and if it's a weekend or a holiday, it's going to take a while to come back. Okay. I did this to my prior ZR2, asked if they would reprogram it to my new truck. They would not do it. Oh, no. So you had to buy a whole I new one. I had store. to buy a whole new one, and the battery is not replaceable in it. Oh, goodness. So there are some downsides, but it's to me, it's well worth it. Okay. Um, not having to have your keys with you all the time. I definitely like that. That is super fancy. <laughs> All right, let's reposition and take a look at some more stuff. What you got going on in here? You got some extra fancy stuff, and uh, we were playing with the lights, and that was a pretty cool setup that you got there. So the setup I have is the S-Pod system, and it's the Bantam. When we show the engine bay, I'll show how small it is. Okay. But that gives me complete control to everything that I have wired into it. And as you can see, I have my ditch lights, my roof bar, my rear bumper, my grill bar, 
and my front camera power is actually controlled through here too. Awesome. I can hook up my refrigerator, um, my winch when I get it, if I get it, when I get it, I guess it's better. <laughs> the other nice thing about this, as you can see, it will give where the controller is, it will give the temperature. Oh. So I have engine temperature basically sitting on top of my fuse box. Okay. Um, and it also gives you volts um, that it's getting from the battery. Okay. What's great about this is it's one ethernet cord that you have to drill through and you did, I did drill through okay. the firewall to get there. This is mounted with a um, ram mount ball, okay. that little pocket that's in there. Mm -hmm. I attach it to the back and oh. drill the hole to run the wire through. So that useless little pocket now has a use. It does. <laughs> and what's great about this is I can still access all of the buttons and my seat heaters without it being interfering with okay. anything. So it was really a great solution okay. for that. If I don't see anything here. It's okay. good, yeah. So the other thing, this is the Garmin Overlander that I've been re talking about. And I have, if I turn on the camera power, it's waiting for the power to turn on. Nice. I now have the front of my truck and you can even see that it goes out to your truck. So I have some distance but I can see right below my license plate Let's there. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. That is super cool. Um, that is on another huge ram mount that is in, it hooks in between the seats so I can take it out, but it's got an air bladder in it ah. to really get a tight fit. Okay. And so as long as you tighten up all the manual adjustments, it does not swing around when I'm driving. If you don't have it tightened up, I've had this thing fall all the way over. <laughs> Um, the other nice thing about the Garmin Overlander is it has normal navigation, ah. but it also has typographical navigation. Nice. And this really came into play when I was up in Montana. Mm -hmm. I was staying at the American Prairie Reserve and me driving on the back dirt roads, it let me know what was American Prairie Reserve land, what was BML land, what was private property. And you can even see here that we're in a park. It's got the stripes going through it. That lets me know that I am on public land. Um, Super cool. So this has been another um, great thing about it. I think it's claim to fame when I'm in the drive mode. I can bring up what's up ahead and you can program what you have here so it will tell me gas stations but not just like asking google show me the next gas station i can go for 200 miles so i can really oh, plan wow. where i'm gonna stop the best thing about it is this i overlander integration i overlander is um crowdsourced app but tells you all of the camping area by you, whether it's pay or it's free nice. um, reviews. So if you don't have cell service and can't bring it up on your phone, this has it downloaded to it. Nice. Um, great on that trip because I was driving from Texas to Montana. <laughs> I found a place to stay at a state park in Colorado when I was up there, Wyoming. It was a town park and it was free and it was awesome. Nice. I found through here. So that's been great. But really, I the Garmin Overlander is overpriced. It's about 700 bucks by itself. But having the ability for the four wireless cameras is worth it. cinched it for me and I could I I have a five-year membership to Gaia Maps, and I still can't figure out Gaia Maps. <laughs> this is much more intuitive, and I'm sure there's more I can do with it. I just haven't learned it yet. Okay. Well worth it. All right. So I know that I'm you're trying to think. We don't. Do you have? Did you already get the center control? What do you have in there? I didn't even. Well, think. this doesn't come. This oh, is no, no, no. this is Amazon. Oh, okay. No, I didn't know um, that. That was there. <laughs> here. <laughs> This you get on Amazon for center control, the same company 
makes a rack for the glove box. Ah, okay. So I can be somewhat more organized. Okay. Um, I like that. Let's open up the back doors. Yeah, let's take a look at the back seat here. What you got going on here? So I truly went with the extended cab. One is because of the foot longer bed. Um, and the only passenger that I would carry back here is my dog. I have a 110 pound black lab. Um, but it also gives, um, I bought this off a member on Colorado Fans. He made it for his dog. Um, and it's just a, a easily removable shelf that goes back here and makes a flat spot. Um, I always carry around this um, Baco toolbox. Um, back here and we'll open this up later and I'll show you why I think it's essential um, but it's basically a socket set a wrench set um, but I always have it when I need it and it is probably one of the best things that I bought for my truck um, but to lift this out it's on a piano hinge okay. it folds up you can easily take it out and still have access to your seats although I Unless it's a baby, I would not put a living being in the back of my dog. <laughs> you know, and that easily goes back. And that's basically what I've done to the interior. I bought cheap Amazon seats, you know, just so I have more pockets back there. You know, and okay. that's basically it. Okay, so moving up uh, inside the engine compartment. Uh, this is where you've got everything hooked up for the controller and everything, correct? I do. Over here is the Spod S-Pod Bantam, and this is a solid state one. Their other one that they sell is not solid state, but you can see the small form factor. I can daisy chain two more of them together and still control them with that controller. Okay. But this just made the wiring of all the lights, the camera, um, that much easier and that much cleaner. So I only have one item going to the negative and positive of the battery for it. Um, and that's it. It is very simple, makes for a very clean install. It's very small. Okay. Um, I love it. Over here, this is the wireless receiver for the Garmin. So okay. going out to that, it's wireless, but obviously you have to connect it to power and mount and the transponder the camera correct? that's for the front camera that okay. we have and i do have three other cameras i just haven't installed them yet okay the last thing uh that i really want to hit on is with the roof rack and everything up here i know it gives you a higher uh, profile how does it do for wind noise uh kind of drag or anything do you notice anything different while you're driving so what i added to the basic pioneer rack that sits on, on top of the backbone system is i did get rhino's fairing okay and Rhino's bracket for the 30 inch Baja Designs bar. Um, so this does come out further than the windshield, but the actual platform rack lines up pretty well. What The thing that I love is this fairing that came with Rhino rack, because it hooks onto the platform system, it doesn't hook on the front. You can adjust the You can points. adjust exactly where it goes inside the bars on the platform is how, how it attached curved. and it, what it allowed me to do was put this side back the ends because your windshield's not flat it's right. curved so i could adjust the fairing perfectly to the curve of the windshield okay i've never seen a design like that on any other rack system and that i think is great do i have more wind noise with the snorkel, the lights, the that, yes I do. I can really hear it more from the passenger side. Okay. Maybe the because the snorkel's over snorkel. there. It's not bad. Okay. You know, I'm not blaring my music to cover it up, <laughs> I'm not. I can hear it. I also have some kind of rattle over on that side and I don't know if something's loose. Okay. Um, I don't remember having that rattle when I first installed it, so I need to check and tighten everything up there. Maybe a cable or something flapping. I don't think the, it was more like metal on metal, so I don't know exactly what it is. I wasn't intending to put the, um, the wire harness for the light down there, but because I had the snorkel, I basically twist tied it onto there 
and keep it in that pocket. I had to lift it up at the bottom so that the windshield wiper wouldn't hit it. Uh, yeah. um, and it doesn't bother me, so I just leave it there um, like that. My other option would be drilling or trying to run it through the back backup light. Yeah. You know, the third brake light, trying to run back so there. So pulling your headliner down and running it all the way around. Yeah, so you know what? This works. It's simple. And to me, with the snorkel there, nobody notices it. Okay, cool deal. Okay, so this wraps up everything on Seth's truck. I'm probably going to break this video up into two different uh, 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 sections because it's going to be a lot of information and a lot of things to go over. Uh, and we'll, it, I think it'll be too long for everybody to sit and watch through one time. Uh, so stay tuned for part two of it, which is going to be part of this. And then in the next week or so, depending on the weather, we're planning on going out and we've got a few other people that we're going to go with and do some uh, uh, wheeling and just show how his truck handles and how our truck handles. Ours being stock, his is clearly not stock. So I'd like to thank you for coming out and give you a shirt. Awesome. So awesome. got you set up here. Thank uh, you. On this sleeve here, we've got some of the stuff that you've been to and uh, in seen. And then on the front, you've got the ZR2 AV. Oh, that's great. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks for coming out. My pleasure. Here.